Hi, thank you for joining me again for my Wednesday devotion. We have been working our way through the Psalms, and today we're going to look at Psalm 14. Verse 1 reads, The fool says in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. And he's talking about, like he said, the fool or uh, the wicked or the unbeliever, people outside of the faith, when he talks about those people who oppose God's work, they say there is no God, they're corrupt, they're vile, they're wicked. Things about them are not godly or God-pleasing. So he's talking about people who are truly foolish in their lives because they have left God out of their lives. Continues in verse 2, The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. That includes verse 3 as well, but he's talking about the situation of those who have, again, nothing to do with God, that the Lord looks down from heaven in a, in a right way to judge, as he has set himself up as judge of all, and saying he's not finding anything good in this world, especially speaking about the, the fool or the evil or the vile or that kind of stuff. So he's simply saying that they're, God looks down on them and he's not pleased whatsoever with what he sees going on in the world he has created. Verses 4 through 7, uh, kind of a different change of tone. We'll look at verses 4 and 5. Will evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on the Lord? There they are overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. So God is kind of giving his assessment of those who are foolish, of those who are evil, saying that when he looks down upon them, they're not so good. And when he judges them, he's not happy with what them seeing, how they treat God's people. It says they will devour my people like bread. They are overwhelmed with dread. And verses 6 and 7 say, You evildoers, frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. So verse 6 there talks about, again, the, the broken, fallen, sinful condition of this world, calling them evildoers. But again, for those who believe, the Lord is their refuge. And that's true still to this day. And you know that to be true that when this world might throw challenges us, when, when evil or sin or that which is vile, anything that is opposed to God, opposes God's people, we know that our Lord is the one where we can take our refuge because of how strong God is, how powerful God is, and he has his children's best interest at heart. And then again, verse 7, Oh, that the salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. We, may Israel, may God's restoration, may God's people, may God's children, his followers, those who believe in the Lord, may that be where salvation is proclaimed from, because salvation is, of course, from the Lord, but Israel here is talking about, may it come from God's people, the proclamation of the salvation. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob, again, another name for Israel, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. So it ends in that always, always wonderful, comfortable, thankful, Good news, God wins. God gets his way. God is greater than all the wickedness of this world. God created this world, so why would anything he had created ever be greater than the creator? So we give thanks that God is always with his people, even when difficulties might come the way of all believers, when the wickedness, the, the, the evilness of this world seems opposed to us. God is taking care of his children. We give thanks for that because let, let, let the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And we are, if we are the new Israel, God's New Testament people who believe in God, redeemed, promised, uh, loved by God. And we give thanks for that connection we have with our Lord. So Psalm 14, a short little psalm, but a beautiful psalm in how when this world might throw difficulties at us, God is greater and God is strong. And we give thanks to God for that. Thanks for joining me here again today. I look forward to seeing you again. God bless. Bye-bye.